my part. That's okay. okay I'm so not... let's, you are recording that. So yeah, we, we just started. Yeah, it's okay, man. We're cool. Hey, Paul. Paul. Can you turn your light? No, turn he doesn't light. have light. He doesn't <laughs> my, have light. My, Thank... I'm, I'm a Thanks. proper developer, mate. Us Thanks. proper developers live in darkened corners. Thanks Do to Boris know? Johnson. He took away the light from the entirety of, of England. <laughs> yeah, yeah. England can't afford electricity anymore. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was watching this funny thing the other day. So Boris, he had this, uh, he was playing rugby, oh, right? God. And he basically pushed out a little kid <laughs> while he's playing rugby. He's playing rugby with a bunch of little kids. And he actually took it too seriously. He pushed out the kid. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Sounds about pa right. Paul, do you remember when he put himself, when he hanged himself? With like a shoot kind of thing, and he was hanging with a string in the air with two British flags, UK flags. No, <laughs> Paul is like that. I don't care about this clown. <laughs> so, so listen, Sam. Let me get. I you like the tree behind you. Yeah, that's Jae Hong. She's really nice. She knows how to draw things. Oh. Jae Hong. She's not here today, but you know. Anyway, listen, my man. Um. Just to get you up to speed on the things that, you know, Paul and I talked about. I don't know if you watched the last session, but we basically said, you know, we need, we need you know, a simple way that can leverage existing efforts that other teams have done, just like we done with the expression. So we, we do joke about it, said, oh, this is fraud and whatever, but it's actually like in Paul's own words he'd say things like we're actually already trying to solve a complex problems and the subsystems that we need to kind of rely on to solve that complex problems are already built so why don't we just leverage that love this mindset you know it this is this is engineering mindset okay pick up your battles he said that pick up your battles let's just build on top of something that works and then see where we go from there so sam just so you kind of get up to speed on this the the consensus here is is that we're gonna go and leverage the capability that the entity framework gives you. Um, uh, 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 I had a thought earlier actually, and I put something in the chat about it. The existing yeah. uh, OData framework that that Sam maintains yep. um, relies on a library that effectively does what we're trying to do, right? The, What's that the library OData. called, Paul? Do you know? The OData lib stuff because mm -hmm. sam correct me if i'm wrong here because you'll probably you, well you what's not the name? probably you will know more about this than i do so what's, you, what's the name got, we've got aspnet odata right and that's wrapped around a, something called odata lib which is an internal odata implementation which actually implements the standard to my that's about the best of my knowledge but obviously i might be way out here so the name again What's the name, Paul? Odata Lib. So it's literally oh. Odata L I B. Oh, what the Lib Google, is? Uh, if you Google that, that you'll, a... you'll find that there's a NuGet package with the exact same name. Let's and see. if you take that, that does all of the, if you like, Odata to express. Is it one word, Paul? Is it one yeah. word? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so Odata Lib, one word. Okay. Like okay. this. What is this library, Sam? Do you know? No, no. We always say our library, for example, order the call, order the EDM as order the lib. Um, is maybe, it under? Uh, is it under Odata? Do you know? Maybe I'm missing something. Um, try try doing a new get search. Okay. Just Odata lib like that. Yeah. It doesn't exist. Oh, weird. Maybe it's maybe it's not actually published as a package. It's just an internal dependency. Then I'm did sure you, it shows up in my ASP.NET projects. Did, did, by the way, did you see this system spatial? Yeah, that's it has the, like the GIS hundred... stuff. Yeah. So that will have um, definitions of things like a vector and mm -hmm. um, you know coordinates mm -hmm. and things like that. For um, I, funnily enough, I I once had a job working for the local council and they had a geospatial system. And that, that that stuff, man, is next level. Right. Uh, yeah, I've, I've recently bumped into a lot of people like like flat earthers and stuff. 
And like when you look at a, a database full of geospatial data that's been collected by surveyors for say, you know, 50 square miles of land, you can actually see curvature in it. It's bonkers. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, um, so, so Paul, where did you? I'm sorry, Sam. Go ahead. Go ahead. Within Audit the team, uh, we call all the labs belong to Audit as Audit the lab. Yeah, but yeah. he's he's talking about literally like a thing called Odata Lib, like literally. I know we all call it Odata Lib, but we what... don't have Odata Lib, a Lib yeah. like Odata Lib. I'm right. sure they used to be. Who's um... this? Who's this Ignacio guy? Hey, buddy, can you hear us? Uh, he's, yeah, can you uh, hear me? Oh yeah, that's project. Ignacio from uh, from Microsoft. Hey right. man, Hello. hi everybody. Your hey. your camera your camera is not working. Ah, uh, yeah, bit shy, sorry. For him, just like, I was rushing to this, and I'm still fighting with a build, sorry. <laughs> no worries, no worries. And uh, uh, Ignacy, we are recording it, so, and we ah, are okay. So um, if, we, if you think it's okay, <laughs> you can turn on your camera. Ah, okay. Uh, I'm just, sorry, I'm just struggling with that. I don't want to <laughs> look distracted on something different. So, so Paul, just just a little because at Sam and I, do you remember that day I told you, hey, let's go have an OData session, and then we said we're gonna have an internal conversation. Uh, uh, Ignacio is is a, a colleague at Microsoft, and he is uh, very passionate about OData. He's using it in his day to day work, and he went and he did a hackathon around you know some of the stuff that we're trying to do with OData, and uh, uh, he's he's a he's a really sweet and nice guy in general. You know, Sam invited him to this, uh, to these sessions, so he can also leverage, you know, his um, his amazing skills. He's a senior engineer at Microsoft to kind of, you know, drive with us this work. Uh, it's amazing how the OData community. By the way, Sam, you're so lucky because you have a lot of people that are just enthused about OData, regardless of what they do on daily basis, which is amazing. Uh, but uh, Another anyway. person to put you and me to shame, then, Sam. No, Is that what you're saying? No. Somebody who actually knows this stuff. We're we're just yeah. like fumbling around in the dark, bolting other people's work together. That's, see, <laughs> see, see, see. That's the beautiful thing. You know, <laughs> with a lot of engineers, when they get stuck, they're getting stuck in the dark. I get stuck live on YouTube. So when someone wants to help, they'll come in and help. You know what I mean? I, to to my surprise, just so you know. Uh, this group, uh, Sam, do you remember this company that we talked to without mentioning specific names? They're also leveraging OData and they're watching literally every single session. They're very, very heavily invested into seeing where OData Neo goes, you know, on both the fact that it's a, a an engineering project, an attempt to rewrite an existing legacy system, but also on the promise and the capabilities. I mean, look at it. We already reached like... Uh, you know, we just started, you know, a lot sooner than most of these projects and we're getting a lot of likes, a lot of stars and a lot of people are watching and people are watching. People are watching what's going on. So this is great. That's the beauty about open source, right? So anyway, um, I did a bit of Googling. Um, uh, I sent you a link in the just send chat. It? Is yeah. it in the private chat? Okay. Let's so if you, look, if you look in there, if you scroll down, I think your original premise was right, that it's it's just the core library. If you scroll down to um, point two in the description there, project structure. Oh, okay. Point two. Yeah. There you go. Two project structure. It says underneath that. Uh huh. There. Oh, yeah, oh, data lib. Lib. there it is. Yeah. So this is what I think I was. That's what he to. calls core. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm sure it used to actually be called oh, data lib though, didn't it? I, or is that I what... could. I could swear I saw that too. I could yeah. swear I saw. Oh. <laughs> so, so my understanding is, is that called? library my, my understanding is that library has in it enough stuff to do all of the expression building um and get and do the same in reverse right there, sh there should be enough information in that library that we can if necessary pull that apart figure out what needs to be done and then put it back together in standard form right or am i missing something so order the lib uh, here name is just uh, represents the audit dot core library, okay? Right. And yeah. this library contains the uh, URL pass to to uh, pass the request URL into the segments of audit pass. 
Another part is do all the other serializer, a serialization and deserialization. Okay. So that's the main part in the audit call. And the, um, the, we also have some code to uh, build the path, best, uh, build the request URL based on the path. So it's mm -hmm. more about requests and responses than actual Something like expression like tree processing or anything. Um, um, audit call doesn't um, have the link expression builder or link expression translator. Okay, it just takes the um, the node mm -hmm. or the token, something like this. It's a audit token, audit node, and uh, uh, use that to build a string. It's a request URL string, contains the request the path and the query option together. Okay, okay. It, it's not, it doesn't touch the link expression. Mm -hmm. Right. If we want to um, do the link expression to audit the request, mm -hmm. we have the code in the audit dot client library. So one of the things um, I think it was Callum pointed out to me earlier on the week um, that um, internally, what Entity Framework is doing is it's effectively doing an expression tree rewriting which I assume the OData framework is doing as well somewhere. Uh, um, Entity EF, I think and, EF just also has the similar things. He translates or visits the link expression uh -huh. and construct it as a SQL st statement. So, so one thing that I found curious mm -hmm. um, is if I take a dependency on the ASP.NET OData package, I can use that without having any dependency on entity framework directly, if that makes sense. Or I can take a dependency on another library. Mm -hmm. um, I can refer to EF. And then when I take an I queryable that happens to have come from EF, despite the OData framework not knowing anything about it, it's able to take, say, an expand expression and translate that into parts of an expression tree that EF can translate into an include at its layer, which it then builds the correct SQL for. So what I'm really getting at here is there's code across teams that is essentially doing the same job, but with slightly different potential keywords or syntax to explain what these operations are. But let's say expand and include are essentially the same operation, right? Mm. An OData expand is an EF include. With me? Mm -hmm. I'm with you. So that we're solving, that they've already solved this problem in two different ways. And I think there's the key thing that I would like to achieve here is if we can find some middle ground and we can say, look, is there somewhere in all of these libraries that Microsoft has um, across all of these teams, is there some way that this expression manipulation or whatever it is can be shared into some potentially standard compliant library that we could build? And then all these other frameworks could just plug into that if necessary. Like we don't necessarily have to build it. We could take one of the ones that already exists and use that in our framework. But do you see what I'm getting at? Um, so Sam, he's basically saying, you know, if there is an existing effort to manipulate, you know, these expression trees and, you know, transform them, tokenize them and all that kind of stuff, is there a way we can potentially just leverage that, build it in a universal library in uh, a standardized way? Mm -hmm. yeah, I understand the question from Paul, mm -hmm. but uh, I think... In my memory, I don't have such library or such efforts existed for us to use. We're going to have to do it. We're yes, so that's why. But, I'm, I'm cool um, with that, but if there's lessons that we can learn or if there's like portions of code base that we could take from, yeah, that I'm, would greatly I mean, shorten our efforts, wouldn't it? You, you know places, Sam, where we're doing this. It's just not the library. It's just patches of code spread yeah, across. Yeah, I, I think um, both EF or ODET client has a similar code 
uh, take the link expression and visit each part or each node in the in the expression tree and uh, convert it to what they want. It's same as a uh, Ignash Hexen project. So Hexen has project, a project yeah. called Audit Translate. Yeah. He just take the Audit the expression tree and visit each node. Collect me Ignash and translate mm -hmm. to uh, what did request you are. My my question right. here is uh, go ahead go ahead Ignacio go ahead. Go no ahead. yeah in the in this specific project it, the, this translator wasn't aware of the query, so it was basically translating the expression to its equivalent syntax in our data, like uh, within fields, values, and operations, and that kind of thing. But like uh, the actual calls for like filter or expand or select would not be done within that. That should be done by the caller. So I, I guess what I'm kind of getting at here is that if, if you think about it like this, right, an expression tree is essentially the common language runtime's understanding of a question or a query, right? Mm -hmm. So if we can standardize what a query is and then provide a mechanism for that to be pluggable in such a way that you can get out different languages from that, so a SQL statement, an OData query, and you can feed different languages in, say an OData query, a SQL statement, and get an expression tree from it, mm -hmm. that it, it to me feels like... like... The, the same way for the iCurlable. So if we check the iCurlable interface, there's an expression and uh, another expression data provider, something like this. So anyone mm. can implement that and uh, provide it, uh, it uh, his own implementation, how to translate the expression to uh, right. the data source. Oh, I like so this a lot, right. Sam. Mm -hmm. So we, what, we can do the same really thing we have that. the audit expression and anyone can implement the pro audit provider, something like this translate the link expression from audit and use that for other data source. Okay, so think about that, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm getting at is given an expression tree, Entity Framework can already generate, say, Microsoft SQL or, say, MySQL queries from that because they've already done that work. They've implemented that interface. Mm -hmm. So what suggesting here is an abstraction layer higher than that we say okay assuming there's an implementation of that interface we build our own interface which sits on top of that which plugs into the odata neo framework mm -hmm. and we take each of these different internal provider implementations as the if you like the broker that's going to back the query building for us Hi. Is this yeah. Alice or or, or Lucy? Another one. Sorry, this is Lucy, guys. <laughs> Look, Daddy's having a phone call. All right. So Paul, Paul just a couple of days, Paul have another baby. Awesome. Mm. Yeah, yep, yep, yeah, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> so yeah, so what I'm getting at is that given all the efforts that have already kind of happened within the .NET, .NET ecosystem there must be some way that we can kind of plug these pieces into each other and where necessary do new pieces of work. So I don't think that there is kind of going to be an implementation already that takes an expression tree and turns it into an OData string. But I think there will be something that takes an expression tree and turns it into a SQL statement. And both of those things are equally valid as a pluggable thing that could plug into Neo, if that makes sense. See what I'm getting at? No? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I'm thinking what? about this. Uh, it's like I don't have the, the whole new thing I'm, I'm starting here. But one of the things I checked while I was doing this simple translator is the context awareness of that translation of expression. When right. you think uh, like on the expression itself, like pass on to a word clause or maybe a word method or maybe order or select, um, the expression itself doesn't have any context. So it's like a name equals uh, John Doe, something like that, okay? So that thing is valued within a word, but it's not valued within a select maybe, or maybe in an order by, because sort of that would return true if right. you try to evaluate that. So one of those things that you 
figure out like it's not just the translation that can be pluggable. It has to be somewhere knowing that whatever is going to be translated within the context of one of these operands, because it's not the same set of valid operations within the, the translation. I don't know if I'm getting my idea through. You're just saying that like entity framework is aware of the fact that it's it's context aware because it knows what it's building for, right? It's building for a, a SQL target. Whereas when you're dealing with OData processing, you don't know well, how it's going to be consumed. You're just building an expression tree. So I, I, I cannot say for EF because I don't know, but the idea that you, that you just said is correct. Like when I was doing this, I I was testing my, my translator for OData and uh, into a work clause. And one of the things that I was just doing is passing in a variable from the scope instead of the actual parameter. Like instead of saying customer such as customer.name, I would say customer such as the scope.name mm. because it was a variable from the scope. And my translator would assume that I want to uh, extract the value because it's not the parameter, but something coming from outside. So it will say ordered by John Doe, which wouldn't make any sense. So at that point, it should have failed instead of allowing that to parse the value. That's that's the, the one of the, the things that I learned from the project, like saying, hey, there is some context awareness during the translation. Or so, at least not the translation, maybe just the, the the rendering or the parsing of the result of the translation. Okay, so so are we saying taking an expression and turning it into SQL and then turning that SQL into a data is bad? Do, do we not want to go that route? It seems like a lot easier. Possibly, yeah, um, because the, there's going to be, um, as is pointed out here, there's going to be contextual differences, right, for valid reasons potentially that may come out oh, by so us. So that's your play store at uh, Wednesday morning? Yeah, that's what we were talking about. So convert the link expression to SQL statement, convert it to to that uh, question mm -hmm. yeah because sql was considered to be very o data like yeah um it sort of made some sense in that you could kind of tokenize your sql statement and you were pretty much 99 percent of the way there and 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 by the way sam entity framework is already doing that for us so all we have to do is just drop that but the output from EF call for the SQL statement mm -hmm. um, based on the different uh, database. For the SQL server, for the Cosmos DB, my core, it could no, be different. No, no, hear, no, hear me out. We'll just use the core SQL one, and that's the one that we're going to use to convert. Yeah. Okay. So first, we have to unify the SQL one. So we're just using the core SQL one. So you said. Another part is if we have the six sediment, mm -hmm. we still need some effort to translate. Yes. To but, the it's, request. but it's a lot simpler than having. It's a lot simpler. A lot simpler because, you know, now you're you're mm -hmm. just coming down to the primitive state of things. Like you have, you have in SQL select name, right mm -hmm. from students. And that's it. Now you can go and translate that into OData by saying, okay, that's actually, you know, select a name, something like that, right? Now, of course, it can get a bit more difficult because we go and say select name and then you go and say where name, right, uh, equals, you know, Sam. So that means that here we need to go and say filter, right, name, EQ, Sam. But this is this is simple. We can take the clause. We can look at these clauses and just turn them into O data queries. It's really simple. It can get quite tricky with nested scenarios, but I don't even want to like. That's that's just to, you know, just look at the here and the now. You want to bring a select scenario out the door. And you want to be able to go and say, I want to select a bunch of things. I want name. I want age. I want grade. Sure. Why not? Name, age, grade. Like the the least amount of work that you will need to do. And the entity framework is already giving you that outside of the box. So why don't we just build on top of that? Yeah. Uh, uh, one question is here. Hmm. So if we query uh, entity set or sync entity, 
Mm -hmm. The SQL statement is also a select, but there's no dollar select clause for that request. No, no, Sam. So if you, you just uh, do like less. No, wait, wait, wait. The... Sam, yeah. I, I think. I think he's yeah, talking about be. like we did with the O tokens. We would yeah. build O tokens and translate them essentially. Yeah, 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 exactly. And you know, Sam, even in, if you're doing filter, it'll just say select all. Select it's all different. from students. Do you have dollar select, select equal star? No, yeah, no. So when you see that, you just wouldn't generate. We the just we wouldn't select. generate anything. We'll say this is a generic statement. We don't care. Ignore. Okay. Uh. Okay, so in in this case, if we have dollar expand, uh -huh. um, so we can say uh, we have a student, and the students and the uh, question mark dollar expand. Uh, we have a schools question mm -hmm. mark dollar dollar expand equals student. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we have to left the join and uh, uh, yeah, in the join and uh, select right. Mm -hmm. So what's the select clause here? I'll tell you. So s dot id equals. I'm trying to write. Uh, I'm trying to remember my uh, my uh, my SQL here. So c dot i student id, right? Uh, uh, so that's expand for me. So I can basically go and say, okay, from students inner join whatever. I can take that inner join that translates into uh, 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 expand, right? Courses. That's it. So inner join turns into expand. So what's that, that face? Come on, Paul. Give me something better than that. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm, I'm just not convinced because there's. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I know. Um, <laughs> I, I think that it would. Two parts. One is make sure uh, the link to the SQL statement is unique. Yep. Okay. It's. I don't think EF call EF provides that. It's from the database data provider. It's from data provider. It, it so SQLite has its data provider. SQL Server has its data provider. No, I know. It's Sam, totally different. Another Sam, part is we have to pass this query SQL statement. Yes. Understand each part. It, it's not in our control. Okay. We don't have such a uh, whole we knowledge about it. that. It could be left join and the real clause or the buy, a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But we have to build a mapping between SQL statement to audit. Yes. Request. And that yes, in that and of itself we is also... that mapping. It's not in our control. So, so just hear me out. Mm -hmm. Just mapping raw SQL statements to mm -hmm. OData queries is a product in and of itself like it can be a library on its own that says oh data to sql right why is that yeah. because and a lot the, of yeah yeah I, I don't understand so so that's my concern i just share my concerns yeah so one concern took it and the third concern is so what's the benefit i mean what's the purpose when customer to to get using our library right so suppose he just get a stream, but he have to install the EF call or any data provider to something like to, to finish they, the process. They don't, Sam. Oh, data need come shipped with all of this. The, it doesn't matter what the provider is. We'll just use an entity framework SQL to give us bare minimum Microsoft SQL so Statements. what is the new will depend on the SQL library? On entity framework SQL. On yes. entity framework SQL server data provider. Yeah. So in this case, uh, customer installed all the new library. It will pull the SQL or any is, other yeah. packages to at the local and mm -hmm. use that. I, it's, I, it's a good idea. I, 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 haven't, uh... I, I hear I hear your concern though. Here's here's how I'm seeing this. Like whatever you see inner join, you know, you can easily translate it into expand. Whatever you see where, this is 
what you translate into filter. Whatever you see select based on the you know uh, parameters, that's what translates into select, right? No. And so on and so forth. No, not that's not not the case. I I I share an example on um, when I when I do the demo when I did the demo at a conference. Okay. So I have the dollar search. Right. Behind the scene, dollar search is, is a real clause. Yep, yep. So I have I want to translate that back to the audit query. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In this case, real should convert to dollar search clause. But it, it's not the the case. Real is not always dollar filter. Okay. That was my worry. And and things like you can nest, uh, so you can say dot select, uh, sorry, dot dollar select, and then you can say brackets um, filter, mm. and then you can say brackets select. And that's valid O data, but it's not valid SQL. Mm. But yeah, you're not so how to, so the first the first concern is how to um, understand the nested query. Because for yeah. the SQL, it could be a flat SQL statement. Yeah, but, but when you go deeper, in the, things are get It's a nested query in the uh, query option. Uh, all of this is a concern. We can move on to see what we will uh, what will happen. This is this is this session is mainly just for this, just to go and say, hey guys, you know, here's what our brainstorming session, you know, and this is what I want to do. Ideally, just exactly how we did tokenization for a raw O data query, we're gonna need to do something very, 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 very similar, you know, with uh, SQL SQL uh, uh, statements. So it's gonna come down to something to the effect of, I want a, I want a a SQL uh, query service that will generate a SQL query. And then I want a, a SQL tokenization service that gives me tokens out of this SQL statement. And then I want, you know, the SQL uh, O tokenization, which basically will take that SQL statement and turn it into O data query back. Ideally, just for the select scenario, and we can expand from there, like we're not we're not doing filter or anything else yet. We're just doing on the select level just to get kind of a, a horizontal delivery situation. Um, the, the only thing that I can think of at the moment is to basically go and say this, this, this query, you know, if I can pass in O data query from one side, and get it back as an expression and then take that expression and send it back to o -data, o data neo and get it back as o data again from the other side that's transcendence that's the the biggest hardest feature that we want to implement in o data neo to be able to receive an o data query go into the service as a i queryable and then it comes out of that service into other microservices downstream as an O data query again. So O data query, expression, expression to O data query, boom, you're out. You finished up one big massive, you know, feature <laughs> or epic like we call it in in that stream. So we meet Monday and start writing code. Is that what you're what I'm hearing? Uh, yeah, I tried to see the codes. Yeah. Show me the codes. <laughs> okay, talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. Show me the code. So, so the one thing that we're gonna do, Sam, since we know how to generate an expression out of an O data query, what we're gonna do, just so you know, uh, let me find a web page here. So, listen, dude, uh, there is um, there is a capability here mm -hmm. where you can basically go and say, this is my uh, here's your context. And you're creating this DB context is just a normal list. And then I want to show you the example. Let 
why I am at this point where every article that I read is someone I already know. This is weird. Like the dude that wrote the article in there, I know that dude. Um, uh, raw sequel. Have you found, I found this as well, like the further you go through your career, you find that you sort of, you somewhat specialize, but in a very generic way. That as weird as that sounds. So, but like in your space, you start to find that you kind of know everybody. <laughs> Seriously. And I'll tell you something though, like in my situation, like you'll see me hopping into the Blazor community. You'll see the Blazor people. And then a little bit later, you'll see me, you know, kind of chatting with the Odata folks, right? And then a little bit after that, you'll find me hanging out with the folks that do game development. And then maybe the AI folks. And then maybe the, you know, it's it's just at some point in time, you run out of people, right? <laughs> I used to think that, like, IT as an industry was massive and there was just these millions of people. But actually, can I... there might... There might be millions of us, but there's only like maybe a few thousand that are actually talking about it at mm -hmm. max, you know, mm -hmm. and of those, it's like a few hundred that yep. people really kind of want to listen to, if you know yep. what I mean. By, by the way, just so you know, like a long, long time ago, I wrote this thing. I, I'll just I'll just close up with that and then I'll have a demo, a working code in the uh, in the next session as, as a POC. But a long time ago, Paul, I was showing this to also uh, Daniel Roth. And I said to him, gee, I do talk a lot. Uh, so I, I was talking to Daniel Roth about this. We were talking about the growth of coding and, you know, how things evolve and how the tech industry in general kind of propagates. And I came down to this. Let me show you. There is a, there it is, the life cycle of technology. I draw this circle just from my observation. This is how every technology starts. You have a visionary. These visionaries, you know, get in into a good relationship with someone who actually can write code or turn that vision into code. And then these people start publishing their work. So a community gets built around that. The community gets large enough. It gets adapted by the industry. And then the industry, it becomes a de facto in the industry. You're going to start having people that are using the technology without even knowing where did it start and who the creator of it. Like, you have no idea how many people I asked. I said, who who, who invented Java? And they have no, absolutely no idea. They don't know who James Gosling is, you know? And then you get to a point where there are consumers that are benefiting from the product, but they don't even know that it's there. Like, you, the people that use your web applications and stuff, like your consumers, your, your muggles, right? Your people out there on the street, right? This is, this is how technology evolves. So put Sam there in the middle. Right. And then we are just kind of running around, Sam, making things, you know, and then we built a community around it. That's that's the Odata Neo and Discord and all that. The crazy part about Odata Neo is just it's just in a bigger in a bigger uh, orbit. It's kind of clashing orbit wise with the standard community. So there is these products that we want to build, but there is these ideas and principles that we want to hold. So this is me just watching there. If you think coding is what's actually making me excited about all of this you'd be severely wrong this is my 48th enterprise project i am sick and tired of building that shit. okay what i'm actually looking for is how this dynamic between people and code works and how technology evolves in that particular direction that gets me excited because that there's no books around that Sam is like, fine, let's just write code for God's sake. I'm tired of this nonsense. <laughs> so no, so let's me we need uh, some investigation ahead before next session. I think mm -hmm. Paul is really willing to do that. So could it be could us give Paul a homework? Yeah, Paul. I'd, I'd like, like to have a look. Let's get it yet. Paul, you and I and you, you and I and Sam and Ignacio, if you want to play around with it, entity framework. You pass in an I queryable and you produce a a raw SQL from it. You know, it's really simple. It's just a minute. I'm just too lazy to do it right now, but <laughs> it's literally just it's literally a minute. Like like if I open up literally any project I have in here, let's open up you know the project that I do at work, my DMX core project. Literally, if I take this guy here. I'm actually curious to see what the difference would be between 
Yeah, and but, the, but, you see the tree behind the person? That's the expression tree. That's the expression and tree. You just cut it, cut it, the tree behind you. <laughs> that's 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 Sam. That's Sam right there. So so watch this. You can literally go and say, you know, out of all of this, I want uh the um what is it is it is it command create db command hold on just trying to remember the damn thing hold on this dot uh, uh database you kind of remember what you did yeah i execute rossi yeah i can't remember but hold on i think you do it on the queryable don't you can't you say like two too well, simple statement or something. Uh, right. I'm trying to get the DB set first. So that, that would be the, you know, what is it? Lab? Yeah, there you go. Labs. And then um, uh, to, to query string. Simple. There it is. Yeah. Generate string representation of the query used. This string may be suitable to direct execution intended only in the debugging, blah, blah. So this here will just give you SQL just like that but it will give you microsoft sql or mysql or it, 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 microsoft sql <laughs> yeah so it, like it's a... provider specific so we yeah sam was right he was saying that you can't just take a dependency on the core but wait, library why it doesn't matter we just want something intermediary language a protocol that can yeah. give us this capability. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's Cosmos. It doesn't matter if it's SQL. It doesn't matter. I just I'm want something. To see, <laughs> Go ahead. I'm, I'm curious to see the comparison between the SQL that gets output and if we just wrote an expression tree visitor where we just recursively recalled, recalled the expression tree and just spat out the value of each node as a string just to see what we got from it. Yeah. That's that's what I, that's what we should do next time. Next time, I'm yeah. gonna pass in a query and try to get the and try to get the raw SQL from it. It's literally what I just showed you, like that's mm. exactly what it is. But mm. uh, you know, let's give it a shot and see. Mm. All right, cool. <sighs> it's fraud, <laughs> but we could try it. <laughs> yes. All right. It's a great uh, idea. So I'd love to see. Sam, Sam is just sitting there seeing real. all the stuff that we do, and then he goes and improves his existing product. And be like, okay, I get it. So that's what engineers want. <laughs> anyway, let's just keep going at this. You know, we're we're at the last run. This is the last run because we already took an OData query, we converted it into an expression. Now we need to take the expression and bring it back into an OData query. That's it. That's transcendence for you, my friends. It's just as simple that's as that. Transcendence. Yes. So let's see how that works. Okay, I have to jump on that next meeting, but I appreciate you all. Ignacio, come eat food with me on Monday. <laughs> and, and Sam, I'm Sam too if he wants, and we'll just eat and send a picture to Paul to so just feel, yeah, to make him feel included in the <laughs> things I could call you on a live stream. But I <laughs> so so let me just tell you something funny about this. When we started this session, Sam and I were surrounded by just all people from the community right now it's just paul and he's surrounded by a bunch of microsoft employees just <laughs> around him asking and everybody says to me why do you do it they just want to preach and sell you products and i'm like really i'm just there to be antagonized by Hassan. that's how i do it I, <laughs> doesn't sell me anything i like all this work. i like to be verbally executed on a public stream live stream <laughs> Oh God! I literally said that. Didn't I? That's what <laughs> Callum said. All right, thank you all. I appreciate you all. I truly do. Let's let's sync up next uh, on Monday and see how far we can take this. Okay, I appreciate you all. Take care. Bye. <laughs>